This is the easiest message that Donald Trump and the Republicans have. And it's very simple. Very, very simple. First, Kamala Harris is a blithering idiot. Scamala, Shamala, Shamala Ding Dong, whatever you want to call her, if it works, if you think it's funny or pithy, that's fine. But she is dangerous because she's an idiot. You're not going to be seeing her speak extemporaneously. You're going to be seeing, look at her Philly appearances, look at her other appearances, look at what she's saying. Look, it's going to be abs- temp- uh, a teleprompter only. Next, you're going to see less of the cackling. They're going to try to tone down and burnish the, the rough edges of this fool. Next, Tim Walls is a lunatic. He is a radical extreme. President Trump, do not use, this goes for anybody in the Republicans, do not use leftist, San Francisco liberal, limousine liberal, Chardonnay liberal, whatever these terms are, leftist, progressive, because the leftists and the progressives and the liberals don't see anything wrong with that. You want to use two words, extreme and radical. And there's two things that people have to understand. More importantly, this man specifically is part of this lunatic gender stormtroopers who want to destroy and break down the walls, the, the, the time-tested historical and anatomical differences of men and women. Look at what he did regarding making it available for kids in Minnesota to, to have gender mutilating. Think about this. Gender mutilation, gender affirming, gender reversal, whatever you want to call it. It's mutilation of children. Kids who can't even decide on their favorite color are forever going to decide under his reign what they're going to be. Period products, feminine tampons and napkins and everything in in the men's room, in boys' room. What kind of insanity is this? This is perfect. Let the world know about this. And finally, he was responsible. He was responsible for allowing this George Floyd brush fire to turn into this conflagration. This little smoldering event because he could have stopped it, but no, he didn't because that wasn't part of the deal. They wanted this to to forever be the ignition point. This thug, this fentanyl opioid thug, this criminal, this horrible waste of flesh who granted may have been improperly handled by a police, who most probably died by the effects of an overdose, irrespective of who was at fault or that the police were complicit, he let that happen on purpose. He was responsible for fomenting and fueling the conflagration that forever changed not just this country, but the world. And the reason why, the reason why Josh Shapiro was given the axe was because the Democratic Party is violently, virulently, now I I, I know what you're going to say, anti-Israel, not anti-Semitic, not against Jews, Judaism, no, 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 don't confuse the terms, they despise. Buys um, our our affiliation with with Israel. They despise Bibi Netanyahu, as do significant factions of Israelis. So don't don't confuse the two. That's not what's going on here. They would she would have never been able to deal with it. How 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 can she? Especially when there's going to be more protests. And wait till you see the protests that are going to occur at the Democratic convention. And the very first question I would ask her if I was President Trump, and I'm telling you right now, is one of two things. Number one, I would say, Ms. Harris, what do you think about this? Is Israel guilty of genocide 
regarding Gaza and Palestinians. Boom! Answer the question. No matter what they ask you, and the reason why I'm doing this, ladies and gentlemen, is not to necessarily make a point as to that horror show, but to force her hands so that she will be forced to either, because somebody's going to be lost. The hardcore Democrats want her to say, say it, agree with the ICC and the ICJ, and the others, the more tempered, the more the more traditional, the Nancy Pelosi's, who, by the way, have yet to speak with Joe Biden, they're going to want to say, don't do it, don't do it, because left and right, two sides of the same coin, the American professional leadership, the whatever you want to call it, the Uniparty, as Wendell Wilkie coined, I believe, they're 100% behind Israel. And whatever BB says, they're going to do. Now, again, remember, we'll talk about this later. The right. I want to bring out the, the, the issues. And the second issue to bring out, to make her answer the question is, what do you think about a man going into a boxing ring and beating the hell out of a woman and then we give him a medal? You for that? Do you believe there's a difference between men and women? Force her hand. Because if the truth be known, that's the issue that people understand the most. Let me also tell you what I'm trying to do. I want to win this. I don't want to make friends. I don't want to say the right thing. I don't want people to say, oh, he's so, oh, what a great show. He's a great podcast. He's so nice. No, I don't care. Every time I say something about this, a bunch of people run, they get mad. I don't care. It's my life. The truth is like that. Things don't fit perfectly. This is a this is a protean kind of a chess game, this political, because if people aren't going to vote, if Trump's not going to win, I'm not interested in what's going on. Okay? Let me tell you something right now. You listen to me carefully. I'm not one to, uh, to uh, be prone to hyperbole. I know you might be surprised by that. I don't say things just to say things. I say things because they're the truth. This country is at an absolute critical point like nothing we've ever seen because the problems are internal. Our enemies are not Russia or China or Israel or Hamas or the Houthis, or anybody else from that. Not Hezbollah. No, no. Our enemies are here. Our enemies is this radical left, radical extreme Democratic woke party. That is the enemy. Do not be mistaken. Do not confuse the issues. Do not be confused. I'm not, I'm, I'm serious. I'm serious. Trump can beat her, but he most certainly can lose this. And if he loses, he goes back to Mar-a-Lago and plays golf. And we're stuck with four years of interminable horror. Do I make myself clear? Now comment as you see fit.